Delighted now to be joined by Johnny Gall and St. Junior's uh, senior footballer and goalkeeper, Sean Patton. Um, firstly, Sean, uh, hasn't been a bad year of uh, club football for you so far? No, definitely not. That's been actually a brilliant year for my first uh, county medal there with the club, you know, um, which has a huge history of winning county titles. But it was nice to get the first one in seven years there for the club and my, my first senior medal was great now. How did you find going back to the club maybe after a disappointing year for Donegal? Ah, it's, it's exciting because we went straight back into training and just the intensity levels and even just seeing how, how good a shape some of the lads were in, was, it, was, it was exciting because you knew there was a great opportunity for us to, to go on and, and, and win the county if, if, we, if we could have kicked on and learned from, from the years previous and thankfully did but I thoroughly enjoyed going back to the club this year. It was it was exciting as soon as we got going, you know. What did you most in, uh, enjoy about it? It's just you know, club football is different. It's it's nice to as you said, my my situation would be different now. There wouldn't be too many lads that I would have grew up playing with because I wasn't playing Gaelic as you might know yourself when I was younger, but uh, just the togetherness and just the, the, the team bond that, that was brought this year was was something different and it was brilliant to be involved in, especially with a lot of the, the young lads coming through. It was, it was just a good, good tight group, you know. People looking overall at Donegal football over the last few years would have looked at Kilcair, Guido and the Glenties being the powerhouses. And you would finally got over the line there, as you mentioned, uh, first time since 2014. Was there a particular thing you done different, or did belief come from underage success, or what was the key factor? Do you feel yourself? Uh, it's hard to put your finger on it. Like if you look at the past, maybe the past three years that I was involved in, like we got beat, we got beat by Guido and Glanties in eighteen, um, in the group stages, and the two of them went on to play in the final, and we got beat by Glanties. 19 and Glenties in 2020 as well so like we were never that far away we lost by a point to Glenties in 19 and 20 do you know so we were ever so close for the two years but I think it was just maybe just getting over the line on the day was was massive for us there was nothing you could say we'd done massively different now uh, you can give huge credit to the backroom staff there and the management staff at unions because the endless amount of effort they put in was was a huge part of, of getting over the line this year, do you know? Rory Kavanagh coming into coming into the role obviously helps things massively. An all Ireland winner coming into a club setup like that. Of course, listen, Cav's a Cav's a good unions man himself as well. He's he's been there and he's done it with the club. And to, to have a very successful and talented footballer finishing his career and going on to club management and thankfully having having a good year this year with us um it was class because as you say you're playing with not necessarily just a Donegal legend but also a unions legend you know uh, a lot of the a lot of lads looking up to him and like myself having a man telling you what to do that's been there and done that kind of could possibly get the message across a wee bit different to maybe somebody that, that hasn't done what he's done do you know the potential is obviously there. It's still a very young team. And when you look at it, like Niall O'Donnell, obviously Donegal player being captain and I suppose the average age of the team, there you probably do feel like there's another few gears in you. Of course, listen, it, it's I've been saying at the start of the year, it's if we could get over the line this year, there's it's it's open season, you know, there's there's a lot more to come from the team, but again. It's easier said than done. You still have to go out there and you still have to perform. Like we, we'll always have the ability to to go on and challenge for a county title and hopefully go on further in the next few years. But as you say, it doesn't just come naturally. You have to work hard for it, and it's important that we we don't take our foot off the pedal now and we kick on and go further. You know, it's obviously uh, devastating last weekend to just fall up short um, against the Glen by the Narrowest Emergence. Yeah, listen, it was difficult to take. Like it's especially within the manner that we lost it back in our in our backyard. Like you know, to, to play in your home pitch in Ulster, you don't get many opportunities like it. And 
just listen, as I say, it didn't go our way on the day. Myself, I kicked three frees wide and a couple of scores we considered at the end were possibly a bit a bit naive or something on our behalf. But as you say, it's hard to take, but again, it's a massive learning curve for, for the team. And hopefully we can learn from it and kick on in the next year, you know. At one point last like that, does it take a while for it to kind of get out of your head, I suppose, with it, with it being so close? That does, yeah, of course. It's like boys are busting their arse all year and training really hard and, you know, to fall up short by a point, especially in your home pitch to a team that you that we thought, like, listen, Glenn are a fantastic outfit and there's some serious footballers in there. But as you say, we went toe-to-toe with them and we, we should have got over the line. We didn't. And I'd say probably... Maybe a bit of experience or a, a bit of naivety crept in. And you say you have to get over it. It's football. Um, as long as you learn from these things, that's the main one, do you know? It must be a huge encouragement, though, as well, because Glen Eyre, I suppose, fancied by many to be all Ireland contenders this year. Yeah, listen, there's no doubt about it. They're, they're a very good side, extremely well organised. And, you know, there's a reason they're being back to, to go on and, and win Ulster and, and go on and compete up in the All Ireland stage. But as you say, for us, it's exciting to see we're not that far away from them. And as I say, we I think we, we probably could have won on the day had we been a wee bit more clinical. clinical. Uh, myself included, you know, would have been a different game. But as you say, you live and you learn and you, you have to take the hurt with you onto the next campaign. So, so it sits fresh in your head that you don't want that feeling again. And as you mentioned earlier on, um, Sean, there you started your career off uh, in the League of Ireland uh, with soccer, playing with numerous um, clubs in the League of Ireland. Ah, yeah, I played like growing up. It was always my preferred sport. You know, you had aspirations to go to England and stuff, and just things didn't work out. Unfortunately for me, um, played a bit of League of Ireland then, and thought it was probably maybe time for a change and time to maybe kind of get your life on track and get a, a solid job behind myself. And, you know, as I say, it was just, a, it was a gamble to, to decide to go and play. Um, but when the opportunity came up and I seen, I got in and I got involved and I seen what it was about. It was, it was unbelievable. And as I say, once, once I got into one training session, I couldn't turn back and say I wasn't going back because something I thoroughly enjoyed, you know. And was it, it was a goal of yours to go to England? Did did a chance ever particularly uh, come for you to go to England? Or? There was a few chances, yeah. I was over at a couple of different clubs and that. And I was at uh, Aberdeen a couple of times and was close to signing, but stuff fell through. You know, just as you say, these things happen at underage football and it, it fell through and I stayed at school and I ended up as you say, playing League of Ireland and, and obviously trying to use the League of Ireland as a stepping stone to get to England at some stage. Um, but you know what, looking back on it, I'm probably glad because I got my leave insert. Um, I have a lot of mates that went across the water and left before they were finished school and they're back again and they had to set their leave insert at an older age and it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit more difficult. And it'd be hard to take and you'd follow the love of the game then you know if, if you get let down so bad when you're when you're that age and as i say probably a blessing in disguise but i would have took your arm off you to, to go and sign across the water when i was younger you know was it tough at a young age like when that's your dream all along that's tough but as you say it's the way things are like it's a, it's a tough no, no different to no different to the, the gaelic football it's it's a tough industry you you take you take what comes your way, you know, you can't be too sorry. You have to just keep moving forward because as you say, every man has a setback in their life and you just have to you have to learn from it and build on it because if you're feeling sorry for yourself, it's not it's not gonna get you anywhere. Obviously, um you played with Derry City, Finn Herbs and Sligo and your years in the League of Ireland, how do you look back on it now? I loved it. Like it's it's a great experience, and to be able to say I played at that level for a number of years, it's it's good. Um, I just thought uh, when I come to the point of my career where I had to make a decision, I was thinking when I'm 35, 36, and I'm coming to the end of my soccer career, I did I didn't do the co- I didn't go to college, or I didn't I didn't have anything set up for after it. 
So that kind of was in the back of my head that I needed to get a good job. I need to get myself, maybe go back to college or, or go into the job that I went in. It was always something in my head that, that like I, could, I could have my life set up for me uh, rather than worrying about it after I retire from the soccer, do you know? And would most of the League of Ireland clubs you were with back then, would they have most of them been professional or what, how did it work? Oh, yeah, well, it was Derry, Derry and Sligo were full time. Uh, when I was when I was with them, they were playing the Premier Division, and it was full time professional kind of setup. You know, train every day and that. And Harps was in the first division when I was playing with them, and it was a Tuesday, Thursday a game, Friday, and then the gym in between. You know, but as you say, the st- the standard has gone up hugely, and, and every club in that in that league is extremely professional, and, and the athletes they are, they're good athletes. They have to be if they want to compete. They have to be professional. You know. And I suppose the professional, is that something you embraced? Like, I suppose when you are a professional, that it was just soccer full time all the time back then? You have to, yeah. Like, it's, it's where you improve. You have your opportunity, you're training every day to improve on certain aspects of your game and get better and get fitter and get stronger. It's, it, it was a great experience for me because, as you say, like I was training every day and I didn't, that was my work and I was fit and I was keeping myself well. and to be able to use that base of that mentality of uh, I need to train, I need to work hard uh, and bring it with me across to to the, the Gaelic, it was, it was huge in helping me, if it makes any sense. Yeah, it must massively help with your preparation now when you look back on that time. It does, yeah. Like, and as I say, you do see boys taking time out after training, they do a wee bit of extra work and, and then wee things there, you look at it and think, it's the hard work that's gonna it's gonna get you over the line. It's gonna it's gonna maybe pip you on the line ahead of the boy that's chasing for your spot, you know, with some wee extra bits of work that that help. And in the end, you obviously uh, chose to go over to Gaelic football and like you have mentioned some of the reasons why, but was it a tough decision at the time to leave the League of Ireland? It was, listen, as I said, even at that age, I think I was 22 when I when I stopped playing football, I was still aspiring to get across the water to England and still looking to establish your name in the League of Ireland and stuff like that. And It's not a decision I took lightly. I was offered the opportunity by Declan Boner and that, and I had to sit down with my family and I had sat down with a, a number of different League of Ireland clubs who were looking, looking to sign me as well. And as I say... I was going through a stage then where I was probably not enjoying my soccer as much as I probably should have been. And then when Boner offered me an opportunity, he told me to come in and have a look around and talk to a few of the lads. And whenever I got involved with that, it was it was the shot I needed. And once I went in there, I knew I wanted to be involved and be part of that panel. And as you say, that kind of made the decision a wee bit easier. You mentioned earlier on you, you hadn't played much football growing up. Was it a surprise when Declan Bonner rang you at the first time to come into the setup? I was. It caught me by surprise. Like my name had been thrown around a few times previous years when Rory Gallagher was in. I was talk, talking with Maxi Kern on a number of occasions. He'd asked me to come in and try a few training sessions. But uh, at the time, I, I just decided to go ahead with the soccer. And when Declan asked me, um, it was, it was the, the opportunities were probably going to run thin after that if, I, if they kept turning it down and I said sure I'd take the chance and, and I took, took Boner at his word that if I worked hard and got in he'd give me an opportunity and thankfully he, he stuck to his word and, and he gave me my opportunity At the start it must have been I suppose challenging because there was keepers in there in front of you to work your way I suppose to the number one uh, in the Donegal setup now? Of course, it t- t- takes a lot of hard work. And even when I was in, it was Mark Anthony McGinley and Peter Boyle, um, two lads. I was going in there as third choice keeper, you know. Um, got an opportunity in the McKenna Cup uh, after coming back from an injury. I played my first game and played reasonably well. And there was had to set a couple other games out because other keepers were playing. And then I got another opportunity. And, as you say, I played the McKenna Cup final and the following week we were playing, I think it was Monaghan in the league and uh, Declan gave me the shout and I haven't looked back since. So it was grand. Like it was, I was lucky to have, have Declan 
to, to give me that opportunity to, to, to say, listen, go out and enjoy yourself and play. And if you perform well, you'll keep your spot. And that's all anybody can ever ask. And Sean, just to maybe touch on the whole area of goalkeeping at the minute in Gaelic football, like what level do you think it can go to? Because I suppose if you look from the start of this decade to what it's went to now, it's, it's just amazing, really. Oh, it's, it's, there's endless possibilities if you want to look at it that way. It just depends on uh, on where people want to bring it to. Um, as you say, like the, if you look at the likes of Neil Morgan and Began over last year, in the last year's championship, some of the stuff they were doing was it's unbelievable. Um, as you say, it just it, it depends on, on what the manager's thinking as well. You can't just stand there up the field and and the manager be shouting at you to go back into your net. So it just depends. The game's changing so much all the time. There's always people looking for new avenues to gain an advantage. And I think people looking at the goalkeeping role now will see that you can reap huge rewards from maybe taking an odd chance here and there with the keepers. Yeah, you mentioned Rory Began there and Lyle Morgan. I suppose that flick in the All Ireland is going to be remembered. But yourself, is is that a role you like when you're allowed to come out the field and get on the ball? So yeah, listen, as I said, if I was asked to do it, I'd do it. I don't particularly mind. It's as you say, you have to embrace opportunities. And if somebody asks you to do a job, if Declan asked me to get involved more out the field, then it's something I, I would do. And it just depends down to the manager. It, as I say, I, I love getting on the ball. I love playing. I love getting the ball at your hands and, and, and having a bit of fun with it. Like, you know, you have to enjoy yourself when you're out there. And I suppose maybe going up the field, it's, it's a wee bit more exciting than just standing back watching them. But as I say, we'll see what comes, see what the, what the, what the plans are for the year. And as I say, it just depends on, on the goalkeeping role, how it develops over this next couple of years, I would say. Is it just a thing, really, when I, you're in that role, not you obviously don't think of the risk of what could happen. You can't tell you have to you have to enjoy it and embrace it when you're there because if you're thinking about what what could happen, then that's where mistakes and hesitation comes into play, do you know? And as you say, no different to the likes of Neil Morgan or, or Began if they're going up to kick a 45 or a free, they're not going up thinking, geez, what could happen if I miss this? Or they're going up with a clear head and just looking to to take every kick one at a time, do you know? You mentioned Began there and Morgan and obviously Stephen Cluston as well as being an other standout keeper. Is studying goalkeepers, uh, other goalkeepers, something you would do yourself? I think it's something you have to do. You can always learn, learn from different different goalkeepers and different things and the way they do things different. Like it's it's a huge way to improve yourself. Um you have to be open to change and you have to you have to accept the fact that the likes of Nile Morgan, the likes of Rory Begg and obviously Stephen Cluxton, boys like that, they're, they're the best in the game. And if you can learn from what they're doing, as well as picking up on, on a few bits you might like to do yourself, then it's, it's a way of improving, I suppose, and studying what they do well and trying to bring that into your game. It's, it's something that would be, would be a big part of it, you know? Is there one key area from some of those keepers that you might have taken into your own game in the last few years? I wouldn't say there's anything in particular. Like it's the two boys, uh, Niall and Rory, like like to get involved out the out the field a lot more than than I would like. It would be something that would have been alien to me. I wouldn't have got involved too often. Now it's becoming a thing where I'm going to have to get comfortable with it and that. So maybe adapting that to my game could be could be a big factor. So. Did you did you find a big change between playing and goals in soccer and Gaelic football or do you think they're quite similar? I think there's there's a lot there's a lot different like um I think just it's it's hard there's a lot of so there's a lot of activity in a soccer match where a keeper is heavily involved. They're always over and back and up and down. Whereas a goalkeeper in Gaelic, it's always phases of play they're involved in. Um, and it can be easier for a keeper in Gaelic to switch off and, and, and not stay concentrated. Uh, and I would say that's probably the most difficult thing is, is if you do switch off, 
you're liable to make a mistake fairly quickly. Um, but say as in Gaelic football, like the keepers, it, it's a massive role in the game now, and it's vitally important. I think I think there'd be a lot more pressure on a keeper in Gaelic football than there would be in soccer, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. And for your own kickouts in Gaelic football, like away from the collective sessions, how I suppose how do you practice your kickouts, or what's the secret there? It's just repetition, just constantly trying to get better at, at, at what you're doing and trying to perfect the skill. That probably is not going to be perfect every time, but you have to try to get as close as possible. But as you say, it's something that I think you need to do within, you need a couple of players with you. You can't go out kicking on your own as a goalkeeper. Like you can't be kicking out the field and then running after the ball yourself. You need somebody there, you need targets and you need people to hit. So it'd be something I would do mostly in collective sessions. It wouldn't be something I would ever do on my own. And I suppose, how how do you perfect pinpointing it fifty or sixty yards, or is it just repetition, as you mentioned? Is it like as I said, there's there's everybody's different. Like if you look at if you look at myself kicking the ball, if you look at Niall Morgan and Began kicking the ball, Cluxton, every one of them has a different technique. They're not the same. So it's about. It's, it's just about practice and finding what works for you, um, finding a routine that suits you and finding what what does work. And then once you find out what works, it's about, it's about practice in it. And if you don't practice, it's the skill will drop off and you'll not improve. And there's always room for improvement. So as I say, the main thing is just repping it out and doing as much as you possibly can to improve. And to get the variation, I suppose, between short and long is when you're playing oppositions, it's... Is that maybe a lot of video analysis work you might do yourself on, I suppose, the opposition pressing or not pressing? That depends. Like, you, you know what you're going to come up against and you can do, like, video analysis is grand. It's good to have an idea, but I wouldn't swear by it. I wouldn't be a man to say you have to do video analysis and this and that. It's grand to have an idea of what the opposition's going to come with. But I would always say, like, once you get the ball down and tee in your first kick out in a game, it's it's when you find out what's going to happen or where you see space and, and and what you can what you can do from there. It's kind of more off the cuff thing where you can can you not you, you have the ball down, you're looking out the field trying to find spaces. It's kind of the way I like to feed my way into a game. Now different people might be different. Other people might love the video analysis side of things and need to do it on perfecting everything because they have a certain way of doing it, but. I like to feel my way into a game and get my first few kickouts away and see what the opposition are pulling against you, do you know? The way Gaelic has gone as well, when maybe a team does put that squeeze on and maybe from one of your kickouts a score does come, how do you not let that get inside your head? You can't, like, it's, as you say, as a goalkeeper, and it's, it'd be said all the time, if a goalkeeper makes a mistake you're found out straight away. It's very rarely uh, a goalkeeper will make a mistake and, and it'll not lead to a goal or a point or something. It's just something that you have to accept that it could potentially happen in a game. If you kick a score or if you kick a ball short and they score a goal from it or if they score a point, it's, as I say, it's, a, it's a hard one to explain because it is what it is. You can't beat yourself up about it. It's a mistake and if you start beating yourself up about it, then it affects the rest of your game and then it affects the team because you're losing points and scores for them. It's you can't let it obviously you can get disappointed after the game, but I think it's it's important not to be frustrated during a game if something's not going your way. Is it work you have to do with a psychologist sometimes maybe to not let mistakes define you in a game? Yeah, like as you say psychologists some work for some people it doesn't for others and as I say I haven't I haven't really looked into the psychologist side of it ever it's something that I would always it's hard to know like I, I would I probably should I and mean, I might be a wee bit ignorant there to to be like nah sure what do I need to talk to him for but I think I think maybe kind of as I'm getting a wee bit older now and, and you start to learn it might not be a bad thing if it can improve my game two or three percent then by all means I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna talk with them so it's something that I'm gonna lock into but as I say so far in my career it's something that I haven't done I haven't spoke to psychologists about stuff and 
I just, as I say, I like to go around doing my own business. And as I say, if I'm going out worrying about making mistakes, then I wouldn't enjoy playing. And if you're not enjoying it, what's the point, you know? And so one thing I always say, if, if I ever stop enjoying playing and I'm worried about stuff, I just won't play. Like, I don't, I don't see the point. I'm going out there to enjoy myself and I'm going out there to obviously represent the county and make your family and friends proud. And when it comes down to it, you don't go out to play bad or you don't go out to make mistakes. These things happen in a game and you just have to accept that as part and parcel of, of the game. I get the sense that it's a real enjoyment factor for you going out representing your county, playing number one for Donegal. Could you say it again? Sorry. I just get the sense from you talking there that like, it's a real enjoyment factor and if kind of fills you with pride going out representing Johnny Gall and playing in goals. Oh, it does. Listen, like there's, there's nothing like walking out and walking out to maybe twenty or thirty thousand, forty or fifty thousand, maybe sixty in Croke Park. It's, it's there's no feeling like it. It's 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 just, it's there's words can't really explain it. Like it's it's unbelievable. But as I say, you're going out there, and as I say, I'd always say to young fellas that that be they'd be asking you questions and be saying this, and don't worry about making mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. You go out and enjoy it. And as you say, I I love it. That as I say, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it. And to, to go out and represent your county as well as like see walking out even in, in your home pitch for your club. And represent them in the county final a number of weeks back. Like it's something that fills you with pride and it's memories you'll have for the rest of your life. Like it's 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 lovely to have and as you say it's thoroughly enjoyable. At the moment now we're I suppose coming to the end of November and the McKenna Cup and everything is approaching around the corner again. But for you at the moment now, I suppose how are you preparing for the inter county season? You just have to get back on the horse. I take a couple of weeks off and enjoy myself and have a couple of beers or go away somewhere for, for a while with the girlfriend or do something just to relax. You need to switch off as well. I think that's vitally important that you can't just be switched on 365 yeah. days a year. It's it's not sustainable. Um, you need to you need to take time to yourself and regain your thoughts. And as you say, that's what I'm doing at the minute. I have a couple of days in the gym to keep myself going, but just down tools and, and relax myself for a couple of weeks and, and I'll get back on the horse maybe in next week or the week after. Yeah, even talking to Barry Hennessy there from Limerick during the week, like they were saying as well, like it's it's vitally important. Do you feel that's nearly as as important as being caught up with it during the year as switching off as well? It is, yeah. It's like, as I say, some people go, go around the year being completely involved and engulfed in it and it, you can burn out fairly quickly and you can you can maybe lose interest or get frustrated as you say it's nice to be able to switch off and spend time with the family and friends and maybe get out for a couple of drinks here and there and, and go out for a bite to eat or go away on holiday I think it's it's a huge part of it because if you don't have that downtime then you're just going back into the same cycle and as they say if you, if you go back into that cycle without any sort of rest not alone your head will break down, but your body could break down as well because your body your body needs rest as well after a long year of football. Going back to Donegal now um, in the 2022 season, for you yourself, where do you feel you're at as a team? I think, like, I'm, I'm excited. Like, I'm, I'm excited to be involved with it because if you look at last year, we, we were knocked out by, by Tyrone essentially in the in Ulster semi-final and if you look at the game there was a couple of key points in the game that probably lost it for us and, and maybe on the day it was Tyrone's day to win it but uh, if, if you were to go there another day we could have come out the other side and yet Tyrone went on to win an All-Ireland it just shows you how close it is and how competitive Ulster is as well like it's 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 a matter of inches. Like and no no team really is, is that far away from going on and doing what their own done and getting their all in the middle. Does that give you a huge motivation? Maybe a few years previous to that you really seemed to have the upper hand on Tyrone and then they did overcome you this year, but it was still very close. Like, does it give you huge motivation going back this year? It does, like it shows you like they've they've went on and won in all Ireland. They've they've reached 
the goal. And obviously their goal again is going to go on and, and do two in a row and get another All Ireland medal. It's and us being where we're at, we're we're not that far away. Um, things just had have hasn't went their way on certain occasions, and as you say, something will click at some stage and, and we'll get a good run at it. But it is that's it's a big motivation to show that you're not very far away from from getting to, to an All Ireland stage. And it must be easy in another sense as well, uh, Declan Bonner and Stephen Rattford staying on this year because you really seemed in some games down through the last uh, previous years, like you're just guessing Ulster there. Um, just your game plan, you really seem to have a perfect balance. Yeah, like that's that's a lot of work put in from the backroom staff there to have that game plan set out and making sure every player understands it. It's, it's vitally important. And, and I think... If we can bring on, maybe change one or two things going into this year, maybe bring in something new um, to an already very strong game plan, then it might be the levels that, that takes us over to the top and, and gets us out of Ulster and into All-Ireland again. At some points, like uh, down through the last previous years, that Cavan defeat to Tyrone and just falling short in uh, the Super, Super 8s as well. Have they been tough defeats to take because you have been so close? Oh, they have. Listen, as I say, it's regardless of what stage you're knocked out in county level, it's it's hard to take because you're going out and you're representing your family, but you're also representing the people of the county and the people that travel all around the country to come and support and watch the games. And to let them down and not get through to the next round or get over the line or win an Ulster or win an All-Ireland. It's, it's hugely disappointing, but also like a, a, as a group, it's hard to take because you're training so hard all year and, and all of a sudden it's just over after maybe one game or whatever. It's, it is difficult to take, but as you say, it's part and parcel of football and you have to deal with it and you have to move on and get better the next year. Is that mentally something that you need to work on, do you think? Potentially, yeah, it could, it could be that. It's something that we should definitely look into. Um, it's something that we probably will look into this year is, uh, as you said, maybe a sports psychologist could come in and, and we could talk with and kind of get the group together in that sense. So, as I say, it's an avenue to hopefully look at and if it improves us anyway at all, it's, it's well worth doing. This Tony Gall team as well, particularly Michael Murphy and Neil McGee, the standards they said, it, it, it must be great when you see young players walk into that setup and they see players like that straight away. Yeah, like, you're coming in and you, you've mentioned two, like, unbelievable servants to Donegal football and the standards they set. And Boys, they've done that. They've won Ulsters. They've won All-Ireland. They've, they have everything. And they still keep going and they still drive the standards higher than ever. And to, to, see, to see people that have been there and done that and still want more, doing what they're doing is it's a huge motivation it's a huge like for, for some young fella coming in or, or somebody new coming into the panel to see that it's massive for them to show them what they need to get to if they want to be successful particularly Michael Murphy like as a player playing with him what's he like because he, he literally covers every play the grass for it he go on yeah listen Michael's he's, he's fantastic like he's just he's so passionate and as you say he sacrifices his own game at times just just to defend for Donegal and, and, and play for Donegal and as you say to, to have a, a leader like that in the pitch you don't get them too often you don't get men like that um, they're hard come by but like that man that man would die in the sword for Donegal and as I say he drags everybody with him and brings everybody up to his standard which makes him a very special player you know and, and gets, a, gets a real real bit of quality out of the group and as you mentioned you, earlier on you're excited about this Donegal team and even when you look at your forward unit there's no reason not to be when you consider the likes of Michael Murphy Paddy McBrady Michael Langan Niall O'Donnell and Warren McNeilis his second year back now as well yeah, that nah, listen, like our we'll we'll score in games we we've no problem with that. Like it, it's exciting, some some fantastic footballers that 
could score from anywhere in the field. It's 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 really exciting. Like, and you've you've players coming off the bench there. We have a bit of depth in the squad, and we've we've a good unit coming together. So, so hopefully, listen, hopefully that we can get ourselves over the line in the next year. The draw took place yesterday for the championship. Her mad stairs couldn't get uh, much harder, really. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Like as I say, Armagh. Of, like we've played them last year a couple of times, and they're extremely difficult to get over the line against. They're such a good panel. So as you say, they've improved every year since I've joined. We've played them once, at least once every year, and they've got better every year. And as you say, we we were lucky to get it in in Ball Buffet. So it'll be exciting, and hopefully get in to a packed out Ball Buffet again and, and, and enjoy a nice game of summer football. You got to play Tyrone obviously this year with the crowds back and everything, but how, how special is it playing in the Ulster Championship with a crowd there in the summer? Massive, like it's as I say, during the COVID period, you didn't as I say, for the first couple of years there, you're playing in front of maybe thirty or forty thousand people, and you don't think it's that big of a deal because they're there. You just think, you know they're going to be there. Whereas when COVID hit, then we were playing Ulster Championship games in empty stadiums with a couple of stewards and just the people on the bench and the stands. It, it just it showed you how much the, the fans are needed. It's just that the atmosphere is completely different to be able to have. Maybe getting a wee bit of stick from behind the goal or, or, or a bit of chanting going on somewhere. It's it's huge. It's class. It's it's exactly what it's about. It's what you go out there to play for is to get that buzz off the crowd and represent the people that are paying and to support you, you know. A lot more of a condensed season ahead now with the kicking off in January, all Ireland final fixture July. Like but is it great this year really to have the seven league games back? Because even three or four last year, a lot of teams were only figuring themselves out. Yeah, no, I think it's it's great to get back to the proper league setup because it's especially in Division One, it's such a competitive league. It's difficult to stay up and it's difficult to win, and, and any team could win it uh, if you're looking at the, the the line up there. And as you say, to be able to have them seven games before you run into the championship, including we have McKenna Cup coming up as well. It's it's an all way to find your feet and get settled in early. So it's important to get through the league campaign, but. You don't want to just go through the motions as well. You want to be you want to be up at the top in the league as well. And you see, that's where the best teams are and you want to stay there. How do you find this year? Well, it'll be a new experience uh, for you, for Donegal, but like there won't be much of a gap between league and championship. Is that a good thing in one sense? It is, yeah. Like I, I'd much rather it. I don't like... I don't like the period of three weeks between games or maybe eight weeks off between league and championship. I don't see the need for it. Um, I think it, it's exciting, but again, it's going to be difficult as well. It's going to test a lot of panels. It's going to test a lot of players' bodies, and there's going to be a lot of injuries picked up here, there, and everywhere over the course of the season, especially with games week in, week out in the league, and then two weeks to get into championship. And It's going to be challenging, but I think it's, it's exciting as well because I think – the period of where you're waiting for weeks upon weeks for games can get fairly boring and, and there can be maybe too much done on teams where people start to get nervous and stuff as well. So as you say, you just take it on a stride and see what see what comes out of it. You're working as a guard, Sean, if I'm not wrong, in Navin. Like the commute to Donegal, how do you find that? It's difficult, yeah. Listen, as you say. I'd be off my head driving up and down the road if I didn't enjoy it and as I say if, I can't really complain because it is what it is if, if I didn't want to do it I wouldn't do it as I say and there's nobody to blame but myself I, I want I want to play and I want to go up and down the road for training it's and as I say you can't afford to miss training or you're going to fall behind as well so it's a, it's a big effort to put in but you just have to get on and move with it like. Is that just having to go to train a bit earlier and do your stretching and things like that, I suppose, from driving up? Yeah, I found that actually over the past couple of years. I used to be able to go onto a pitch and just drive a ball and not worry about stretching and stuff. As you say, over the past three years of driving there, it's, as I tell you, I couldn't get out of the car and stand up straight, never mind go and kick a ball. So it's well important, as you say, you just get there, you do your time, you get a bit of stretching, get a bit of work done with the physios and 
and then get out to the pitch and, and train hard. I suppose at the very start of this lockdown, what was it like being a guard, I suppose, stopping people from going places? Ah, listen, it was all right. I wasn't too worried about it. It was... Uh, it got a bit monotonous, no different to the people we were stopping. They're fed up seeing us, and I was fed up seeing them. And it just it is what it is. It's it's only a job for me at the end of the day. I thoroughly enjoy it, and I love it. But as you say, the lockdown is it's hard to take, and hopefully it clears up fairly soon. But I know it's going to be it's going to be going on for another while. I would think. Yeah, I think like everyone. Uh, just to finish up, Sean, a few quick fire questions. Um, Who's been your toughest opponent so far? Say, I'd say in 2018, played Dublin. I'd say it was a massive learning curve for me. Played Dublin first time ever in Croke Park on the pitch. And that was that, that was a tough game for me. I didn't play too well either. And, and we, were, we were beat out the door. So I'd say Dublin in 2018 was the hardest so far. And your favourite game so far as a player? Probably have to be... The Ulster final in 2018, first Ulster final win. Um, it was unbelievable. It was just the feeling of winning and your first Ulster medal and, and being part of it. It was that's been the best experience to date, I would say. And uh, the biggest influence in your career? Going through that, looking as as a goalkeeper would have been the likes of you look up to Shay Given and all our fellow on a goal man. Like, he was somebody you always wanted to be when you were younger, but as you say, looking through that, that's, that he would have been the big influence to, to be a goalkeeper anyways. Great stuff. Well, uh, Sean Patton, thanks a million for your time and best of luck in 2022. Perfect, Paul. Thanks.